I do not have a preference. I do have a couple of tricks. Um, when you're getting to a jar of baby food and you're trying to use, is it MCT oil or you're asking about the powder? Yeah, stage one, stage two. Stage one and stage two, I think typically, I kind of try to do it by food group, so to speak. Um, I find it's easier to use the oils in the meats and things like that. They tend to take relatively well to that because there's a higher, my surmise, summarization is because there's a higher protein and a little bit of a fat content there. So I think it mixes better than when you're trying to add it to the fruits and the vegetables. So sometimes I'll use low dose amounts to do fruits and vegetables, if we can. Yeah, oh, I see now there's questions. Yes? <laughs> um, our son barely ever eats protein. It's really hard to get him to eat anything that is protein. Should we be supplementing his diet with the separate A, D, like, should we be giving him separate vitamins or just the multivitamins he takes, or? So for, for protein, so protein means like, you mean like not a lot of meat and chicken and fish and that kind of stuff? Okay, so there's, the, so protein, okay, so, so protein comes in many sources. Um, there's, so there's, a lot of people think when they think protein, they think meat, because um, we're a meat society, I'm a meat lady. Um, but there's also, there's also protein in, in beans, in peanut butter, and things like that. What I would typically recommend is if you're a patient here at CHOP, you can get a three-day diet record done, and our staff will analyze exactly how much protein is taken in, because you also get protein from things like bread and cereal and milk and things that not every, there's a little, I mean, it's three grams here, three, here a gram, there a gram, everywhere a gram, gram. But like once you do it, you realize, hey, that's really actually quite a lot. I hardly ever see, honestly, true protein deficiency. It's very difficult. Um, but there could be some other things that we could look at, perhaps. And then that might be a good stepping stone. Yes? Can I take this? Are you guys fine? Yeah, yeah, it's totally fine. It, it's it's totally fine. It's a different kind of bact. It's a different kind of bacteria. When we're giving something like neomycin, like an antibiotic, we're wiping out the stuff that we don't really want and hanging out in there. The yogurt is going to help grow back what we do want in there. So there's a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, the jury's a little out on, for me on the on the grain based probiotic piece. So um, I don't. I'm not quite sure. I haven't gotten to look at look at the literature from it enough. Um, whereas the yogurts, I do know that what they're giving you is actually what they're saying they're giving you. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I did on my other slides. Um, there are two that are out that are reputable in terms of the community, like the dietitian community. Um, the problem is, is that when you get to things like oils in terms of you're looking for pure MCT oil content, these oils were developed typically for this patient population, for others too, that want higher MCT oil, but you have to kind of have the relationship with the manufacturer to kind of prove that you're having as much MCT as say like the Novartis product that everyone kind of knows and loves in that container. Um, but I can make those brands available to your to your doctors here, and they can talk to you about them. Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and it can also have a boatload of D in it, which you think would be helpful. But again, the A you worry about toxicity, so. Yeah, you definitely always want to talk to your doctor if you're if you're reading things, if you're finding things that are you know new and different. Um, nutrition information is one of the most dysregulated, unregulated things on the planet. So please make sure that you're talking to your providers because um, there's a lot of stuff that's out there that's just bogus. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really a good thing. What can I do? And then I was going to start with the cereal. So I'm like, and he stopped that for a little while just to get 
In terms of what was the first part of your question again? I'm sorry. Yeah, it was a subject, a she wasn't hitting the five ounces per week weight gain mm -hmm. thing. She was actually hitting the four ounces or something like that. And then she had the, the diet. Sometimes when you start MCT oil, there's a little bit of the diarrhea at the beginning just because your body's not quite used to it. A lot of times if you back off on the dose a little bit and then you try to gradually add it back in, your body does just fine. It's like anything else when you start, has anyone ever here started fiber supplementation, like not knowing what you're doing yourself, just been like, hey, I need more fiber. Yeah, you find out real quick. It's the same kind of concept. Okay. So I should be fine with that, and should I just start with cereal again, or I? I usually like to wait a couple of, yeah, I was going to say, that sounds a little bit, but I always usually like to wait till things get a little bit down to baseline before you change anything, because if you change two things at one time, you never know what happened. Anyone else? Yes. Do I use soybean oil for vitamin E? Um, a lot of the soybean oils have higher contents of vitamin E. Um, I typically recommend doing the, is it TEP? I forget the name of it. What do we use? Yes. Yes. Yes, whoever said that. Um, the medication piece of it, because typically if I'm trying to push an oil, if it's a younger kid, I'm usually pushing the MCT because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be absorbed much better. It depends. That's a very clinically re relevant question. It really kind of depends on the kid's clinical presentation. The MCT oil, the big bonus of it is that it doesn't have to use your liver to get absorbed, and that's bonus for this population. Um, so a lot of times it depends on the cholestase. It depends on a lot of things for, for each kid. Um, so if, you, if your docs want you to be on it, they'd be prescribing it is usually the way I would say that. Anybody else? Yes. Um, our son is seven months, and we have been using progestamil in kids who, who either won't take the oil or have been on oil before, or they have extra progestamil powder. It's just another way of getting the calories and things like that. The benefits of using it are the same as benef as using the MCT. Like, I would use either or. I wouldn't be supplementing foods with both. Okay. One more? <laughs> Last one? And it's not your fault. Like, that's the par part I like to tell parents, too. Yeah, that's good. And sometimes I have to say the doctors are reluctant, even when they should be more active. You know, not in your I'm case, per se. But, you know, there are times where people go like, oh, well, let's see it next visit. There's really being ahead of the game is always a better thing. Can we bring that up at the panel? Yeah, we can. You know, um, <coughs> nutrition is something that almost everybody's willing to talk about all day. Right. And it's very important. But one of the things is let your doctor know that you're not resistant necessarily. Because we they may be thinking, well, you know, maybe we should wait another week. It'll be better. There's n hardly any harm in trying it. It's a little bit complicated to set up, but it's not harmful. It's just, it's just more nutrition. Okay. And I'll be around for the panel, so.